So every day I acquire a little bit more for stuff for students. Got a lot of cleaning stuff, a couple of angle grinders, welding wire, weld one welder so far. Got some more coming hopefully soon. Gloves, hearing protection, eye protection, grinding wheels, holding magnets, welding hoods, spare lenses, spare tips. So I'm slowly piecing stuff together. But today, I'm going to be doing a little introduction to flux core gasless welding. For those of you who um, would like your first lesson free, it's going to be a kind of short lesson, just the very basics. And if you like what you see, then that'll prepare you in the future for whenever it is that I figure out my travel pattern and where I'm going to be. And then if you want to take my course in person, um, on most of the groups I've posted these videos in, I've posted um, my prices and stuff like that, which I have all worked out. So um, this is just going to be a video to kind of get people, um, you know, get their interest peaked if it's something that they think that they want to do. And then if they want a more in-depth lesson, I will be doing those courses here very soon, hopefully, probably next year. Um, preferably next year, possibly the year after, but either way, stuff is coming together. Just the bus is going to be the hardest part. All right, so as you can see behind me, see that stuff blowing around? It's because it's windy. And a lot of people don't realize that when you're doing MIG welding or TIG welding, anything like that, if you have any wind at all, it's going to create problems because it's going to blow away your shielding gas, which is where you are left with basically two welding processes that you can use. You can use FCA or SMA, which is shielded metal arc welding or stick welding, or FCA, which is flux core arc welding, or inner shield or, you know, unshielded um, flux core, whatever you want to call the process, it's the same thing. And the reason why it's good is because the gas and, um, material that protects the weld as it cools um, is created within or on the outside of your welding electrode, your wire or the stick. So for a lot of hobbyist welders, they don't have a garage or a shop or anything like that because it's not a career. So a good hobbyist welding process is going to be flux core, unshielded um, wire feed, basically um, inner shield welding because then you can weld outside in windy conditions, in bad weather, as long as it's dry and, you know, you can be, you know, run a comfortable bead most of the time, you're not going to do too bad. All right, now that you have a couple of clean surfaces to weld to, you're going to want to put your ground clamp on wherever you have a clear spot and you're gonna to wanna to start your bead and I will get to some more details about that here in a second. Always when you're grinding wear your safety glasses, preferably a face shield over the top of that, but I don't have one here. So uh, let me come back to you here in a sec. All right, so ground clamp is in place. I'm about to run a bead, but one of the first things that you should do, one of the most important things that people forget is you want your welding lead to be straight. You want it to be as straight as you can get it. If you're close to your machine and where the wire originates, you want a nice loop, a smooth arc to your location. That way the wire doesn't bind up inside of the liner or have any issues. You can't always be straight, but you want to be as, as unkinked as possible in your line. So that's something important to remember. Uh, the machine I'm going to be using is a Lincoln Weld Pack 100. It has 030 uh, Vulcan flex core wire in it. So yeah, I'm gonna tack this in place and then I'll come back to you after I do that. All right, so after we got this really underpowered machine on some really thick material figured out, I actually started getting some decent beads. They're a little, a little high profile. But, I mean, they were starting to get a lot better. I did some really high wire speed and underpowered. It'll give you those BBs, that Caterpillar look. Then I was having some pushback from here from having the wire speed a little bit too high. 
and then I got it to where it was starting to run a decent bead for being on some thick material like this. But when it comes to flux core welding, there's three important things to remember. Number one is if there's slag, you must drag. You cannot, you cannot push the weld because as that slag cools and comes to the surface of the weld, you'll push weld over the top of that and then you get what's called a slag inclusion and it'll weaken your weld. This, so you wanna be always in a dragging motion. You can't whip it like MIG. Like MIG, you can do you know, big circles or you can kind of whip ahead, come back over your puddle, get that nice stacked dime look, good penetration. Can't do that with flux core. With flux core, you can do crescents like this. If you need your weld puddle wider, just nice little crescents as you move. And that'll give you a good weld line here for your bead good penetration the weld will be flat the other important angle to remember is that you don't want to be straight on 90 degrees to your joint when you're welding because it'll push weld ahead you want to have 10 to 15 degree angle on your gun as you drag back towards pushing the weld away from the direction of travel and the other thing is your angle to the joint if you have a 90 degree joint, you want your angle to be 45 to 55 degrees. Or excuse me, 40 to 50 degrees. 45 degrees being kind of the general standard. You want it to basically be aiming for the middle of that joint with an equal amount of angle to your low and high. And then that'll give you a nice, a nice, uh, um, weld profile penetration um, you can see some heat marks have come through on the plate so I mean it's getting decent penetration for a little tiny you know cheap Lincoln Lincoln welder but uh, I'm gonna run one more bead here and show you the proper way to clean off your slag another important thing to remember is it doesn't matter if you weld that much or that much the moment you stop your weld before you start and, and continue that weld, you need to clean the whole thing because it's going to have slag on it. So if you and your welder screws up, clean it off before you start that bead again, no matter what, or you're going to include slag every single time. That goes for stick welding or flux core. But uh, yeah, I'm going to run a bead in here and then I'll show you how to clean that off real quick. All right, so when you run a bead, when you get done with the weld with, with gasless flux core, it's going to look like this. What you want to do is get your chipping hammer in there, kind of chip the main crust off of it. And then you want to take your brush and you just want to brush that sucker as good as you can until you can't see any more sl uh, slag on your weld. It's kind of hard to do this one-handed here. So uh, let me let me give it a good brush and then I'll come back. All right, so this looks pretty clean, but if you look along the very top side of this weld, you can still see a layer of slag up there. That's a classic case of how you get an inclusion. So you're gonna wanna take your chipping hammer, chip that away and brush it until that's not there. So again, this machine is really underpowered for this material thickness but you can see that once you start to get it dialed in you can actually get some pretty consistent beads this is a lap joint I didn't prep this metal I just decided to run it it's starting to get really cold out here did some other ones over here but on some cleaner thinner material more hobbyist material that this is meant for or on a machine with a little bit more power could probably get that I'm gonna weld the rest of this joint with the wire speed a little bit lower, see if I can flatten out that bead a little bit. So I'll come back to you after that. All right, so this is the bead I just ran before I cleaned it up of the little bit lower wire speed. And I think that turned out a lot better. Uh, it looks a lot flatter to me, so give me a second and uh, I'll get this cleaned up and we can take a look at it. 
All right, so as you can see, that definitely flattened that bead out a little bit. Got the bead running pretty decent on this machine for some cheap Harbor Freight wire. Still some flux to be cleaned off. We really need a wire wheel to do it properly. I don't have one on me. But I did a couple of lap joints and uh, they turned out good on this. So I'm gonna flip this sucker over that's warm and I'm gonna weld this butt joint and see how this thing lays a bead for a butt joint. So we did get a little spatter. It'll come right off with a chipping hammer or a wire wheel, but yeah, this thing does kind of uh, butt slash open corner joints pretty well. See, it's got good penetration. I wasn't trying to blend my start stops very well, but you can see that this machine is perfectly capable of somebody learning how to weld gasless flux core pretty easily and that you can get some good weld profiles out of them once you get your machines set up properly. Well, the wheelchair ramp and seats are gone and it's incredible how much room is in here. I've got to figure out what I'm going to do about the floor, but now two big parts of what was holding me back from this build are done, so I'm going to figure out what to do.